My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be one of my friends just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Remember how, how you, when you were in school, there were always these kids, these really smart kids who knew everything about science. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the kids uh, who, if you saw them in your class, you immediately worried about your transcript because you knew they would throw off the curve. Well, guess what? They all work at Alphabet. Yeah, the artist formerly known as Google, which is how its stock could soar 7.5% today, leading the whole market higher, Dow advancing 224 points, S&P gaining 0.94%, NASDAQ climbing 0.50%. And yes, I'm quite aware that each day is unto its own. Tomorrow will be quite different. Now, it's not just Google. We know that there are a ton of brainiacs at Apple, at Microsoft, at Tesla, and Amazon, which reports tomorrow. If they have a bad number, you'll think they're idiots, but they're not. And maybe they're not as smart at as we thought of Facebook, uh, given that hideous disappointment at the close, but we're going to try to make sense of that. And of all these big tech companies, of all the megas, it's really only Google that truly astonishes, both with its brilliance and its relatively inexpensive stock, even after its 200-point or 7% run today. These guys really do blow me away. Now, I haven't met CEO Sundar Pinchai, but I sense how we need some textbooks or maybe a Google app just to keep up a conversation with this man. In a world of far too glib and promotional conference calls, and I go through them all, these guys really are from a different order. I, I, well, I just want you to listen to how Pinch I started his conference call. I'm going to quote. I'll begin by touching on a few highlights from Q4. Our new AI models are helping to create information experiences that are truly conversational, multimodal, and personal. For example, Multitask Unified Model, or MUM for short, has improved searches for vaccine information. And soon we'll introduce new ways to search with images and words simultaneously, end quote. And we wonder why they're unassailable in search. What are the government going to do, like make them dumber? I mean, come on. Their closest competitor, Bing, feels like a search engine. No, feels less like a search engine and more like a punchline. A sooner goes on, quote, in October, we introduced a new AI architecture called Pathways. AI models are typically trained to do one thing. With Pathways, a single model can be trained to do thousands, even millions of things, from MUM to Pathways to BERT. And more, these deep AI investments are helping us lead in search quality, end quote. Sounds good, right? I mean, I didn't take any of those classes, but it rolls off the tongue so well. BERT. Okay, I'll take it. MUM. Uh, it was my mom. Mom. Now, how powerful is the platform? He, talk, <laughs> this is, he talks about deep minds protein folding system. You know, AlphaFold, which is their program for figuring out the structure of proteins. Of course, it takes scientists more than 50 years to decode 150,000 proteins. With its AI platform, AlphaFold plans to cover 100 million of them just this year alone. <laughs> how great! Ooh. What's alpha full? What's deep mind? What's pro? Terrific! I mean, all I know is get me the hell out of that class. Now, I could go on and on. The whole conference calls like that. It's filled with things I don't understand. But I know what they're doing. They're fighting inflation. They're allowing companies to spend pennies to get all kinds of customers. They are making it so that the world is smarter and better. I have never met anyone in business, small or large, who even debated for a second the value proposition of being in Google. It because it's right where you want to be and it isn't disremediated by Apple's privacy screens. They don't talk down to you. They give you the straight stuff. I'm sure there are plenty of people who are into mum, okay? Let alone Bert. I'm into the numbers. Plus, YouTube makes more money for Alphabet than any other set of networks, and it costs next to nothing for them to generate that content. I want to be the When I grew up, I want to be Google. Yet the stock is so cheap that Alphabet felt compelled to buy back $50 billion worth of shares last, last year. Retiring more than 5% of the share count. Hey, I mean, one was a throwaway. The company goes like, oh, yeah, and we bought back $50 billion. Oh, yeah, we bought back $50 billion. Okay. Now, but you know what? While I applaud these guys and always get angry when some government agency tries to break them up or hector them because they make my life easier. I don't know about you. I want to say thank you to Alphabet for something else they did last night. And this is what I, the heart of what I want to talk about. In a dispiriting day, for, for whether it be with Meta or whether it be with PayPal, I'll talk about that later. 
these guys did something that I really like. They announced a 20 for one split. Sure, a few of other prominent companies have split their stocks, Apple and Tesla named two, but this is different. Google was the first of the entire mega tech complex that openly embraced the idea of not splitting its stock. It was almost like they thought that their stock's high dollar amount was some sort of symbol of greatness. I remember in the old days, as it went up, I used to write the dollar amounts for each centennial mark on my knuckles and urge people to buy 300, 400, 500, 600. It's kind of like Robert Mitchum, an older movie that I really like. Unfortunately, as Google reached higher and higher levels, it started losing adherence. It started losing our viewers. Regular investors want to own more than one share when they buy something, so many people were priced out of the way, especially when it hit 3,000 as it did today. Maybe Alphabet aspired to be the next Berkshire Hathaway, run by the one man who seems to revel in the notion of having a stock that's un unattainable for most. But that's not really Alphabet's ethos. Now, the brokers figured out that they had to do something. For, for example, the folks at Robinhood started offering fractional shares. Some of the others do, too. So you can buy, let's say you pick up the phone. You say, look, I'd like it. Or enter, of course. You, you can buy $800 worth of Alphabet, $200 worth of Amazon. Now, the people at Robinhood, who have a very good relationship, tell me that is working. But I still think this stock split is a good idea because splits do more than just make it easier to buy multiple shares at once. Now, before I'm too criticized about this versus everything else that I've been doing lately, let me acknowledge that it is all alchemy, okay? And you can Google alchemy if you think it's, you don't know what alchemy is. I know splits create no actual value. If you have a pencil, okay, and you break it in half, do you have more pencil? No. You don't get more pencil, but you do have two pencils, right? Sleight of hand. What matters is threefold, though. First, a split is a sign to regular investors, regular investors, okay, that the company's doing well, better than we thought. Now, we can try to stamp that thinking out, but it won't work. That is always a, you hear it on the lightning round. People always call about that. I can tell them, hey, listen, you're, you're dumb, you're wrong. I'm not doing that. I'm not bigger than the concept. Second, individuals who don't want the clumsiness of fractional shares, and they are clumsy, will eagerly start buying when they finally get a chance to pick up 10 shares of a juggernaut like Google. And finally, given what this company's brainiacs know about you, about consumer preferences, this is a decision that will have very wide implications. Alphabet knows you better than you know yourself. They have your search history. So if they think a 20 for 1 stock split is a good idea, they're going to be right. Other CEOs will begin to question why they have to bend over backward to satisfy institutional investors, hence this term institutional bias, with high dollar amount stocks. Remember, when money managers buy or sell stock, they pay commission by the share. So it's always going to be cheaper for them to buy 10 shares of Google at 2960 than it would be to buy 200 shares at 148 So the institutions have browbeaten all the CEOs and CFOs into going their way and letting these stocks get to prices that you and I can't afford. And that buy drives me crazy. Now, this is all fabulous news to someone who's always trying to get people into the stock market, especially individual common stocks of high-quality companies, rather than high-risk, out-of-the-money call options or idiotic ETFs. Just average, just, I see them endlessly just to capture the flavor of the day. I think that they are just, just, they just annihilate your capital. At the same time, big tech companies that have refused to split their stocks are an anathema to ordinary investors. I think Google has finally realized that ordinary investors actually make for a great shareholder base. These people, including you who watch the show, and this is who I'm talking about, of course, you don't dump the stock on the first sign that the cost of user acquisition has jumped or that Waymo's self-driving car technology is delayed or Google Cloud didn't make an additional $50 million. You're in for the long haul. That's who they should want. Maybe the companies are starting to get it through their thick heads that they should want you as shareholders. In the old days, the stock split was a badge of honor. It meant your stock had broken out of the pack and wanted to keep getting sponsorship from individual investors. Every study I've ever seen tells me that when stocks split, they go up big on the announcement and then they stay up. Now, I know it makes no sense mathematically. Once again, you do not get a larger pencil, okay? But... The stock market runs on emotion, not on math. Yet the stock split like this tells investors that Alphabet is rewarding people for sticking with it. You don't see a lot of 10 or 20 or $30 stock split. And what's the point? The bottom line, if a company like Alphabet can split, all right, anyone can. And I think everyone will.
And if the geniuses at this company who knew better than we know ourselves say split, then I think we'll end up welcoming a whole new cohort of investors to the market, one that's been missing out for years. People with enough disposable cash to buy 10 shares of a $150 stock, but not enough money to buy one share of a $2,900 stock. Let's go to questions. Let's go to Paul in Texas. Paul. Booyah, Jim. Booyah. Uh, about two, three weeks ago, you did a segment in reference to good companies with broken stocks for whatever reason they're taken down. About that same time, Humana put out a report that they were only going to get about half of the new members for their Advantage Medicare plan. Right. And they took a hit from about 450 down to $350. And they reported today they're up about $50 of that $100 drop. So, one, is Humana a good company with a broken stock? And number two, if I were to start a small position in it, would I do it now or would I wait for the first quarter report for 2022 to see how this new member's number plays out? Very, Thank you, Jim. Okay, very, very uh, thoughtful question by Paul in Texas. I thought the Humana quarter was good, but... Just to be clear, I thought the United Health and Centene quarters were great. UNH being the best at what it does in terms of technology. Centene, Michael Nidorf, also possible suitor in that company. I prefer those, but Humana's quarter was not nearly as bad as people thought. All right. If a star student like Google, who knows what mom is and is certainly excellent at BERT and can do deep field because they want to do that thing with the proteins, well, if they're doing a stock split, you can bet others will follow suit. On Man Money Tonight, could one man's trash be another man's treasure? I'm checking in with the CEO of Waste Management. Now, that's a little easier for me to understand. To see if the old adage could ring true on Wall Street. Then, does Katara Energy deserve to be viewed in the same way to say Devin and Pioneer, two winners? I'm going to drill into the latest oil and gas play. And I got to tell you something, I think it's very tacky, $2, $22 stock. And then, hey, how about Thermo Fisher? Yeah, they reported strong fourth quarter results, citing COVID related revenue. But what could that mean if COVID rolls over? Well, why don't we talk to the CEO of Mark Casper and find out? Stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.